You ever notice how talking about tractors is basically the farming world's version of a pub fight? Dude, Japanese tractors last forever. Yeah, but American ones have the muscle. And just like that, two farmers are chest deep in a debate that started decades ago and never really ended. But here's the real question. Why are Japanese and American tractor engines so different? Is it culture? Is it engineering? Is it because one side uses a calculator and the other uses a sledgehammer? Let's dig in. USA versus Japan. It's not just horsepower. It's philosophy, pride, and just a little bit of petty competition. Let's talk powerhouses, the giants of the tractor engine world, and who's really calling the shots when it comes to turning dirt and starting debates at farm supply stores. In the American corner, we've got John Deere, Case IH, and New Holland. John Deere is basically the Paul Bunyan of tractors. Big, green, legendary, and with a following that borders on religious. Ask any Deere owner and they'll probably say, my grandfather's 4020 is still running, and it'll outlive my kids too. Then there's Case IH, the red-blooded competitor. All business, all power, with engines that sound like they're gargling gravel. In a good way. And New Holland rounds out the American trio with their bright blue machines, the innovative cousin who's always trying something a little different, but still keeps it in the family. Now flip over to the Japanese corner. Kubota is the silent assassin of tractors. It doesn't boast, it doesn't roar, it just shows up every day for 30 years straight without a complaint. Then there's Yanmar, the diesel pioneer. These folks literally introduced the world to small diesel engines that could outwork machines twice their size. And don't forget Isaki, less known in the States, but a powerhouse in Asia. It's the engine equivalent of that unassuming guy at the gym who can somehow deadlift a small car without breaking a sweat. All right, let's talk about where these iron horses are actually born. And spoiler alert, it's not always where you'd expect. In fact, it's less made in and more assembled by a multinational corporate Rubik's Cube. Take Kubota. Most folks assume every orange tractor rolls off a line in some pristine Japanese facility where engineers in spotless uniforms bow to each machine as it leaves. But actually, many Kubotas sold in the US are built in Georgia. Yep, right in the land of peaches and sweet tea. But don't panic, purists. They're still built to Japanese standards. Precision, quality control, and that stubborn refusal to break down, all still intact. Now John Deere, the green-blooded, eagle-soaring, made-in-America powerhouse, right? Well, mostly. Deere's big tractors are absolutely American-made in places like Waterloo, Iowa, the classic American heartland. But go smaller, and those compact utility tractors? Many have been built in John Deere's factories in India and Mexico. That iconic green machine might have traveled further than the crops it helps grow. Oh, and real quick, please take a moment and hit the subscribe button. It really helps out my channel. Bottom line, the global economy doesn't care about flags, just efficiency. Your Japanese tractor might have a southern accent, and your American one might have spent time overseas. It's not about where it's built, it's about how it's built and who did the engineering. If there's one topic guaranteed to start an argument at the feed store or get someone cut off at the local farm bar, it's reliability. Which brand actually lasts the longest? Japanese brands, especially Kubota and Yanmar, are the gold standard when it comes to reliability. Kubota in particular has earned its reputation the old-fashioned way, by just refusing to die. You'll hear things like, my L-series has 8,000 hours and still starts on the first turn usually followed by someone casually patting their tractor like it's a loyal dog. Yanmar's no slouch either. Their engines are basically industrial diamonds, formed under pressure, impossible to destroy. Compact, dense, and engineered with tolerances that would make a Swiss watchmaker jealous. Iseki follows the same tradition, built for farmers who simply cannot afford downtime during the critical planting and harvest seasons. Then there's the American lineup. John Deere has a mixed reputation here. Their older models, those two-cylinder Johnny Poppers from the 40s and 50s, are still running on farms today. That's impressive longevity. But some of their models from the 70s through the 90s had, let's call them personality quirks. The newer generation of Deers have improved dramatically, learning lessons from their Japanese competitors. 
Case IH and New Holland have similar stories. Rock solid older models, some questionable years in between, and now back to building machines with serious staying power. They've done their homework and probably copied some of Kubota's too, but we'll get to that. Still, if your life depends on your tractor starting after sitting all winter, the average farmer's putting their money on a Japanese brand. They've built that kind of trust. Not with marketing, but with decades of never letting farmers down when it counts. When it comes to performance and tech, let's be real. American tractors are that one cousin who shows up to family gatherings with the latest gadgets, talking about precision farming, and asking why your tractor doesn't have GPS. They've thrown everything at their machines. Touchscreen displays, auto steering systems, telematics that beam data straight to your phone, and engineers computer optimized down to the millisecond of fuel injection. John Deere's command center displays give you more data than a NASA control room. Engine load, hydraulic flow, implement settings, probably your heart rate too if you hook up the right sensors. Their latest machines can practically drive themselves turning farming into something between video gaming and office work. Kubota, on the other hand, doesn't chase the spotlight. Their approach? Quiet confidence. Their control systems are intuitive, reliable, and easy to use, but without the tech overload. Kubota is more about systems that have been tested, retested, and still work after 20 years of dust, rain, and neglect. No gimmicks, just gear that gets the job done. Yanmar engines feel exactly like what they are commercial-grade power plants scaled for farm use. Everything works. It's efficient, responsive, and impressively quiet. But don't expect innovation fireworks. Yanmar's vibe is, if it ain't broke, don't update the firmware. So who's the real innovator? If you want cutting-edge technology and connectivity, American tractors take the crown. If you want proven efficient performance that won't leave you stranded with an error code no one can decipher, Japan's got your back. And hey, don't sleep on New Holland. They might not shout as loud as Deer or Flex like Case IH, but they've been quietly pulling some high-tech moves. Take their Auto Command CVT transmission. It's smoother than a greased pig on a slip and slide and lets you shift without ever touching a clutch pedal. That's not just comfort, that's engineering sorcery. Their PLM system links your tractor to the cloud, your phone, your implement, and maybe your toaster if you're not careful. It tracks everything. Fuel use, field coverage, GPS boundaries. It's the farming version of a smartphone minus the annoying voice assistant. Oh, and don't forget the Genesis engine. Back in the 90s, that beast gave New Holland a torque curve that made even deer guys raise an eyebrow. It was ahead of its time, and farmers still brag about the old 70s series like they were muscle cars. Meanwhile, Kubota's innovation style is a little more zen. They don't rush they refine. Every new feature feels like it was tested by monks for 20 years before it was allowed into the lineup. It's not flashy, it just works. So who's the innovator? Honestly, it depends. If you want flying drone tractors with satellite brains, go American. If you want a machine that'll still be running when your kid inherits the land, go Japanese. Either way, you're getting something built by engineers who take this stuff very seriously. And thank goodness for that. In the value corner, Kubota and Yanmar come out swinging. Kubota especially hits that sweet spot between price and quality. You're getting a solid machine that will likely outlast your mortgage without cleaning out your bank account. Yanmar follows suit with a slightly higher price tag, but you're paying for bulletproof reliability and fuel efficiency that'll save you money long term. Now, if you're shopping John Deere or Case IH, prepare to open the wallet a bit wider. Both brands sit firmly in the premium camp. Deer commands a higher price thanks to its dealer networks, parts availability, and strong resale value. And Case IH isn't far behind. You're paying for the tech, the performance, and that massive dealer support system. That means there's always help nearby if something goes sideways. As for warranties, most brands offer 2-6 to six years depending on the model. But there's nuance. Kubota tends to be generous here, offering longer powertrain coverage because, well, they know their engines rarely need it. John Deere offers comprehensive warranty packages, which sound impressive, but like any good plot twist, you'll want to read the fine print. Moral of the story, decide if you want to pay now or maybe later, either in cash or in cranky starts. 
So here's the million dollar question. Are Japanese and American tractor engines really that different? Well, yes and no. Classic farmer answer, right? On paper, they're all diesel engines turning a crankshaft. Fuel goes in, noise comes out, work gets done. But it's the design philosophy where things get interesting. Japanese engines are like that quiet, efficient worker who shows up early, stays late, never complains, and somehow still looks fresh after a 12-hour day. They typically feature smaller displacement, higher RPM operation, precision fuel systems, and tighter tolerances. A Kubota or Yanmar engine might seem small for its power rating, but that's because every cubic inch is working efficiently. It's the difference between brute force and martial arts. American tractor engines are the worksite foremen with rolled up sleeves. Bigger displacement, lower RPM operation, massive torque at the low end, and a certain overbuilt quality that says, yeah, I could pull twice this if I needed to. They're designed for wide open spaces and heavy loads the agricultural equivalent of long-haul trucking. The engineering differences go deeper, too. Japanese engines often use gear-driven components, where Americans might use belts and chains. Japanese cooling systems typically run at higher pressures with smaller radiators. Even the foundry work is different. Japanese engine blocks often have thinner but more precisely cast walls. Back when Japanese tractors first arrived in the US market in the 60s and 70s, American manufacturers basically laughed them off. Toys, they called them. Garden tractors. Nobody's laughing now. That dismissal gave Japanese manufacturers like Kubota and Yanmar time to establish themselves in the compact tractor market, a segment American companies had largely ignored. By the time the big American brands realized there was serious money in smaller tractors, the Japanese had already built a reputation for bulletproof reliability that was hard to overcome. Fast forward a few decades, and oh how the tables have turned. Now there's chatter that John Deere's newer small tractor designs look suspiciously familiar to those in the know. Similar engine configurations, comparable hydraulic systems, and a few internal whispers that Kubota might be living rent-free in Deere's R&D department. Coincidence? Maybe. Or maybe Deere's just gone, look, if we're going to compete here, we need to take some notes from the best. The truth is, in this industry, everyone learns from everyone else. One brand leads, the others follow. Tweak it, call it something cooler, and slap a new badge on it. It's not piracy, it's progress with a little petty rivalry sprinkled on top. Alright, let's stop sugarcoating and break it down. The strengths and weaknesses of each philosophy. No fluff, no brand loyalty bias. Japanese tractor engines ultra-reliable, the cockroach of engines in a good way. They'll survive anything. Incredible fuel efficiency, they sip diesel like it's a fine whiskey, impressive power-to-weight ratios, but they can be particular about maintenance. Skip oil changes at your peril. Parts can be pricey when you finally need them, and diagnostics aren't exactly DIY-friendly unless you speak fluent scan tool. American tractor engines. Raw, unapologetic power. When you need to pull a stump, they've got your back. Huge dealer networks. Helps never far even on a Sunday. Designed for servicing in the field, you can actually reach the parts you need to fix. But they're typically more thirsty. Expect to keep the fuel truck on speed dial. Complex electronics equal more to go wrong. And older models had a, let's say, complicated relationship with reliability. No engine is perfect. They all come with trade-offs. The key is knowing what you need. Power, efficiency, simplicity, or tech. Your land, your work, your choice. At the end of the day, picking the right tractor engine isn't about national pride or brand loyalty. It's about what actually works for your operation. Chasing raw power in the latest technology? American Iron has your name on it. Need something that'll start every time, no drama, and probably outlive your grandkids? Japanese engineering has your back. The truth is, in 2025, made in America and engineered in Japan might just be stickers. Behind the badges, it's a global game. Parts come from everywhere, ideas cross oceans, and everyone's learning from everyone else. The real winner is the farmer who gets the job done day after day, season after season. Because whether your tractor speaks English or Japanese under the hood, what matters is that it speaks your language in the field.